And we are live. What's happening, everyone? Welcome to Between Rounds here on the Punch Perfect Boxing Channel. As always, I'm your host, Jamie Bourne. And today I've got a new guest with me. He's a broadcaster and journalist for all the names, Talk Sports, Sky Sports, BT, but recently started hosting the Design Boxing Show alongside Tony Bellew. But above all that, he's a big figure in the YouTube boxing community. I started watching his channel back in 2017, a uh, reaction video to Mikey Garcia beating Adrian Broner. It's Mr. Oh, Ad- Mr. Addy Oladipo. How you doing, mate? Dude, that's crazy that you said you watched it back in 2017 because I actually did a deep dive on my channel like um, a couple of weeks ago, just sometimes just watching old videos back, right? I mean, it's good to kind of go back and see how you progressed. And it is crazy watching some of the shit I was saying back then. (laughs) I was just ruthless. I would say anything. I I need to get back to some of that stuff. I was watching some of the videos. I, I used to say whatever I wanted. Obviously, it's a bit harder now because, like you mentioned, you work for different broadcasters. And I guess there is a sense of responsibility not to go crazy, especially when you see the fighters. But I do miss that version of Ade. And that guy doesn't exist anymore, and I miss him. So um, I might have to watch a few more of the old school videos just to kind of remind myself of how it used to be. Yeah, I still remember still remember that video being one of the first ones. I mean, probably when you look back, you probably wouldn't imagine it'd be one of those ones, probably be one of the, the bigger videos. But yeah, I was uh, in tune to boxing, so that was the first one I come across. But it's great to have you on the channel. Uh, this is Between Rounds, where basically we talk through a number of topics. I upload them as individual episodes, and then the viewers can check out whichever ones they want to check out. So that sound all good before we get into it? I'm good, brother. Wicked. So the first topic we're going to talk about today, and it's probably the most relevant because it's happening this weekend, so we'll get it out of the way nice and early. Manny Pacquiao takes on Udinus Ugas this Saturday, obviously as a, a late replacement for the original Errol Spence fight, which was going to be a bit of a monster showdown in the US. Uh, I think it's, you know, Errol Spence's chance to really become a proper superstar, you know, sort of mm-hmm. piggybacking off the back of Manny Pacquiao's name. Um, and for Manny Pacquiao, obviously, if he can pull that off, he then, you know, just further cements how much of a legend he really is. So it's a bit disappointing that fell through. But in terms of late replacements, you're not going to get much better than a, a top five or six welterweight in your Dinas Ugas. So it's a good late replacement. And a fight that, you know, b- beforehand, most people probably would have said they favoured Spence. They probably now favour Pacquiao, but that may, might make it a little bit more dangerous for him because I imagine that the you know, preparing for a southpaw for however many weeks and now and to face a big, strong world weight like you, Gas, isn't ideal for him either. So looking forward to this fight, Ado? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's not be honest. I mean, let's be honest. Um, it does feel a bit like uh, um, you've kind of won the lottery and then lost a the ticket with this one a yeah. little bit, just because Errol Spence versus Pacquiao was just that fight. I mean, I said on my channel, uh, if Pacquiao were to beat Spence, I mean, Obviously, it's probably a bit of hyperbole, but you, you are having a GOAT conversation because it's ridiculous to, for him to beat someone that's so far past his best era would have been insane. But you're right, it's a good late replacement. I mean, Ugas, and what I like about this late replacement, it's not like Ugas was doing nothing. He was supposed to be on the card anyway, on the undercard of it. So he was already in fighting shape. Um, he is dangerous. I agree with you. He is a top five, top six world weight. Maybe he doesn't get the recognition because there is no massive standout win on the resume although a lot of people thought he beat Sean Porter. So I think it's a good fight. Um, for, for Pacquiao, it's almost a fight he wouldn't have wanted to take, if I'm honest with you, because he wants the fights that sort of push the needle, bring in big money. He's still going to get paid, but this doesn't do neither of those. But um, I like it. I can't wait for it. And it's a very dangerous fight. You're right. You're, you're, you're looking at Errol Spence, a self-paw that, yeah, can hit, but maybe doesn't have the gas tank of a Ugas, who's got the, the amateur pedigree as well. So... Very dangerous for what is, what, a 41, 42-year-old Pacquiao has been out of the ring for a couple of years. So, yeah, excited for it. Yeah, definitely. And I think the point you make there about him sort of being able to get himself up for it, I there's been sort of rumblings that this could be the retirement fight. I know next year he's looking to go for presidency in the Philippines. So I don't know sort of how much that would take up of you know his time, whether he would actually be able to train for boxing. But he's kind of thrown it out there that he still wants to fight. And he, he actually used the quote where he said, how cool would it be if the president uh, defended his world title? So he clearly, <laughs> he clearly doesn't want to quite say that he's willing to retire yet, but if he was going to go off into the sunset, I think the Errol Spence fight was was going to be that. But do you think if he you know, does get a win on Saturday, that'll be enough for him to feel like he can sign off on? Or do you feel like he'll, he'll probably still feel like he wants a little bit more? It's crazy. Pacquiao could have signed off 15 years ago and it would have been done. <laughs> yeah. right? He could have signed off after he beat the likes of Marquez, Barrera and Morales. And that would have been a solid Hall of Fame career. So you never know with Pacquiao. I mean, there has been some murmurings in the past about financial problems. 
Um, and if you're running for presidency, I mean, that's going to cost a lot of money as well, right? So I don't know. If, if he gets an offer of another 25, 30 million uh, to fight Spence, if, fingers crossed Spence comes back healthy, or if Terence Crawford crosses the road and joins PBC, that will be a pay-per-view fight. Amir Khan in Saudi Arabia. So th there are options there, and it is difficult. I think we've seen it with Floyd. It's difficult for any boxer. And we've seen it with all the boxers coming back, right? David Hayden, I'm sure we're going to talk about that. Once 10, 15, 20 million is put on the table, how do you say no to it? It's it's very, very difficult. And I think Pac-Man is under that kind of, almost under that in influence now. He could have retired a couple of years ago, but he still wants to keep going. This is the guy that's not fought for two years. And all of a sudden, someone puts 20 million down. He's like, yep, yeah, you know what? Let's do it. So um, I hope it's the last one, just because he doesn't need to do anything more. This is an eight-weight world champion, five lineal. I mean, how many boxes can you tick? Um, he's, got a, he's got a family. He's got a beautiful wife. He, he talked about running for presidency in the Philippines we can kind of shut the door on boxing now and he can go on to the new career and I, I hope he does that uh come Saturday night or the early hours of Sunday morning yeah I completely agree I, I hope he signs out before it goes on for too long and he sort of becomes the guy that makes other people's other people's paydays and stuff rather than his mm. own um just to before we move on just to get a, a prediction from yourself I think uh I think it's going to be a really competitive fight, to be honest. I think a lot of people look back to that Thurman win and as great as a win of it was, there were times in the later rounds where Pacquiao sort of started to show signs of his age. He started to slow down a little bit. Ugas is a little bit more durable than Thurman. He's more physically strong at the weight as well, so it might be a little bit more imposing. So I think this is going to be tough. I just lean towards Pacquiao slightly on the scorecards. I think Ugas has struggled to impress the judges in previous occasions in some of his bigger fights. But I think uh, I'll just about lean towards Pacquiao. How about you? Yeah, uh, me too. Either seven, five, eight, four. It's going to be tight though. I I'm with you. I think Pacquiao will start just as Pacquiao always starts, which is punches and bunches. It's going to be really fast. And then he's just going to slow down. I mean, look, he has to slow down. He's getting on, right? This is a guy, 41, 42, inactive. Um, you kind of wonder about what sparring he's done as well. I mean, this isn't the Pacquiao of 10 years ago that we've had anyone in for sparring. And you always hear about the sparring wars and Freddie Roach paying people to try and drop Pacquiao and no one's ever been able to do that. This is a completely different Pacquiao now. So I expect him to win. I expect you guys to cause some problems. You guys is no spring chicken either. I mean, you guys yeah. isn't like a 20 year old either. You guys is in his thirties as well. But um, I just think he, he'll have too much for Ugas. As good as Ugas is, and we, we, we wax lyrical about him. Again, there's no one on the resume that he's beaten. Do you know, but there's no standout there. So I think Pacquiao will maybe show that he's a level above, but it's going to be very, very tight come round 10, 11, 12. Yeah, I agree. Just before we move on, I wanted to get your thoughts actually on uh, on Errol Spence and the injury because I know a lot of people have, you know, say whatever they want on it and want to sort of make up conspiracies and theories about whether he is injured or not. But that injury is quite bad. And when I read that it was that injury, you know, it's not just a, a shoulder injury, a hand injury that you, you know, takes six to eight weeks to recover and then you can start punching again or whatever. This is a six month recovery time type of injury. Um, at first they said it was a tear and now they've sort of late reported that it was actually detached um, and I've seen two instances of this injury before there's you know what happened to Sugar Ray Leonard during his career where he was sidelined for a couple of years and basically told not to fight again Michael Bispin actually lost his eyesight in his eye because of it so it can go one or two ways where it can be really bad so I think it's quite a worrying injury for Spence so do you think you know we'll be seeing him anytime soon and is it a concern moving forward? Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I, I really, I'm really not. And this is why, as much as I love the sport of boxing, just like you, I also hate it as well. Um, I was begging for the Spence, uh, Terence Crawford fight, and now that looks like it will never happen, right? It's going to be one super fight that we, we might not ever see. And I, I'd be shocked if Spence is sort of back to where he once was. I mean, he's had two kind of rolls of the dice, right? I mean, once with that car accident as well, uh, and he miraculously survived and, and started boxing again. And now this... And you kind of wonder if that's that. I mean, boxers need, as much as they need Ds, they need eyesight as well. And yeah. if you don't have full vision, it's going to be difficult. Will he come back? Yeah. Will he still be the same Errol Spence that he once was, the wrecking machine Errol Spence, potentially the best waterweight in the world? I don't think so. Yeah, it's, a, it's a, definitely a massive worry. Uh